Cambridge, England is home to an extraordinary creature, a missing link between fishes and us. Paleontologist Jenny Clack has spent her career in passionate pursuit of the first of our relatives to walk out of the water. I study the, the earliest tetrapods, and tetrapods are creatures with four legs and fingers and toes on the end of them. And I'm also looking at the transition that those animals made from living in the water to living on land. It's every paleontologist's dream to find a transitional form, something that falls between two groups that we're familiar with, sort of links them both in its anatomy and also in how we think it lived. When we first collected it, we suspected that we'd got something exciting because we could see lumps in the rock suggesting that there was more to the specimen than met the eye. And we could see across cracks, suggesting that there were things inside waiting to come out. Because when we fetched it from the field, most of this surface was covered with rock. It's had to be dug out bit by bit. Clack and her associate, Sarah Finney, have studied this one remarkable fossil for years. It was a fish-like animal with limbs. Well, what have we been working on today? We've been working on neural arches. The same kind of structures that would eventually carry us onto land. This is a specimen I call Boris, and it really could be described as a missing link, except that here we have it. It's a transitional form between animals with fins that we would call fish, and animals with legs with fingers and toes on the end that we call tetrapods. We are tetrapods. Boris walked a fine line between being a fish and being a new kind of animal. We've got a skull attached to a vertebral column which goes through this S-bend like this and goes off into the tail here. And then here is the forelimb, one of the forelimbs, and some digits here. Although it's got eight on each limb, Boris bears early versions of our fingers and toes. We share other structures with Boris. If we look at the back of the skull here, there's a rod-like structure here and here. And if we turn the skull over, you can see grooved rods. And that means that there was an artery running up that groove feeding the gills blood so that the blood could be oxygenated. And that factor suggests that the animal was still using gills to breathe. It would have had lungs anyway, because most of these early fish did. But this animal was using both gills and lungs, unlike later tetrapods, where the gills are lost. With both gills and lungs, it could breathe oxygen in water and air. Boris displays evolution in mid-process, even though this species disappeared. I like to understand the animals. I like to know what went on, and I suppose one of the greatest frustrations for people like me is that you can't simply get into a time machine and turn it back to the Devonian and go and have a look. I'll never know what color its eyes were, for instance. But it's trying to understand what the animals were doing and what life was like back all those millions of years ago.